just setting the energy here. When God wants to transmit something, he needs someone to receive it. And mystical Torah explains that when there's always a transmission going on between what we'll call the giver and the receiver. By the way, in the sun moon paradigm, the sun is the giver and the moon is the receiver. So this is an in interesting change, switch in the way things work. A teacher is a transmitter or giver and the student is, is a receiver. We all have roles in which we're givers like parents, um, just as human beings. We're always either giving or receiving. None of us are only doing one. But here's the secret of giving and receiving, that no matter how much the giver has to give, no matter how infinite and powerful the giver is, no matter how important and miraculous the transmission, it cannot be transmitted unless the receiver receives. And Sharyichud, the Gate of Unity, authored by the Mitla Rebbe, explains that the way to receive, the ultimate way to receive is deep desire and a, a bitl, a self-nullification, an opening. Like, if you want to visualize it, visualize your mind open, turned upward like a bowl to receive, or like all your cells, like satellite dishes, open, open, desiring to pull in, desiring to receive the new. But it isn't in a, it is, there's a particular stance, there's a particular energy, there's a particular way of being that opens the transmission, opens it wide, and that is by opening ourselves wide. So beginner's mind, you know, we'll talk about things we know, but we know that we don't know. We know that the world is in a state that nobody knows. We know that something is happening. And generally, if we're familiar with Torah, we have some idea, vague, general of what it is, but how it's going to unfold, what it's going to feel like, what it's going to be, be like, what our role is, what the path is to get there. None of us knows. So we want to be wide open, receiving, desiring, connecting. So I just want to start here with a prayer. Please join me. We are a community, we're a community of soul tribe, soul family, really. There are many things about us that set, set us apart from a lot of other people. So far, more and more people are opening and becoming more part of this tribe. But together, we're very alike. We're very like each other in a lot of ways. And I consider us to be the imaginal cells in the metamorphosis, the cells that carry the vision of the future, even if imperfectly. That's why we're activating first. And then we pull the system through our vision, through our opening, through our receiving, we receive on behalf of all. So just hold yourself, if you resonate with this, hold yourself in a state of desire, of openness, of receiving, of prayer. We are in an incredibly powerful day spiritually maybe the most powerful day that ever existed until now because here in israel it's it is rosh chodesh nisan it's the first day of the month of nisan nisan the name of the month it, it means miracles this is the month of redemption redemption means freedom from slavery in egypt in the redemption from egypt it was the bodies of the jews who were redeemed in this redemption it is the souls that will be redeemed to shine forth in the body, through the body. As we rise to who and what we truly are, it's a birth process. Rosh Chodesh Nisan is the anniversary of the creation of man. So it's all of our birthday. Now, you might be thinking that Rosh Hashanah is the anniversary of the creation of man, which it is from the perspective of the physical but from the, the inner perspective, from the soul perspective, from God's the perspective of God's intention and thought, which is far more powerful, it's today. It started already. On our birthday, we have incredible power. The Torah tells us that on a person's birthday, his soul is coming 
down on a new level into his body. And the expression is Mazalo Gober, his mazel, the spiritual source of his soul that drips down from the very core connection to God all the way into consciousness and into the physical cells. That mazel is very strong. It dominates reality. It influences and transforms reality. So the, the truth is that I didn't even put this together until five minutes before I came on the call. So it's all of our birthday. It's the birthday of mankind in Panemius, in Machshave, in God's thought, in God's inwardness, which the inwardness is the platform for miracles and redemption. And on the first of Nisan, we have an entirely new, never before experienced influx into the universe of miracles and redemption. And that's coming in right now. So before we go any further, let's just each of us in our own place and with the intention that it's collective and that we're doing this on behalf of all mankind, all the people, all the, I only exclude those people who really wish for, wish bad on the rest of us. Like with calculate, with cold calculation for everyone else, and they need to up level or they need to go, at least for now. But I'm asking for myself on behalf of everybody, and please join me if you feel moved to, that we should be, all of us, aligned receivers, open, desiring, humble, empowered, supernatural receivers of this energy on our birthday, on our true birthday. And it's very interesting also that all of the planets are aligned. I don't know when I should check. If somebody knows, you can put it in the chat. When was the last time that all the planets were lined up like that? Like they are. When was the time in history, at least our recorded history, this phase of creation where all of humanity was able to connect in this virtual space where everyone can be experiencing the same events wherever they are in the world, where we can connect in these ways, where we can connect energetically and feel it. Everybody here feels energy. When everyone's attention is on one thing, especially when there's emotion involved, it actually spikes the earth magnet the earth's magnetic field which in turn influences us all of us it's a circuit so with all of that and with the fact that incoming right now is an entirely new influx never before manifested in any reality for miracles and redemption for our power to be miraculous for our power to be supernatural, for our power to receive God's love and wisdom and consciousness in completely new ways, if we truly desire and if we align. Never before has there been this confluence and then at the eclipse. And in the year which at least all, according to all prophetic signs lines up with what the Torah, how the Torah predicts the final war will take place. The final victory will take place. Everything has turned prophetic. And here we are now in a moment of time. We're not in the past and let yourself feel this. We're not in the past. We're not in the future. We're here. We're now. And we're now, and we're now, and we're now, and we're now. And in that space, nothing is defined. Nothing is predetermined. God's vision is predetermined, but the path, not. The limits, not. So the present moment creates, creates a new space, a space of infinity, a space of pure potential. And we're in it now in a convergence that never happened before, really never happened before. So I am asking Hashem, God, 
the one divine consciousness who's orchestrating all of this, who flows within each of us, whether we're aware of it or not, and in between, who's bringing creation into being at every instant now and now and now and now and now and now from infinite divine nothingness out of his own deep, infinite desire to be received, to bless, to heal, to liberate, to uplift, to expand, to transform. Asking for miraculous support, guidance, and literal blessed help to up-level our ability to receive in the most miraculous, healing, harmonious, joyful, wondrous, transformational, empowering, supernatural ways that don't override nature, but expand nature until nature itself is totally miraculous. We'll talk about this more soon, but asking I'm asking that all who need healing should be healed, that all misunderstandings should be clarified, that the truth should inescapably shine. That hearts should open, that compassion should burst forth. continue deeper and deeper, that there should be a liberation, a freeing from enslavement, from brainwashing, from toxicity, from everything that has held down the human spirit, that the human spirit should open, rise, shine forth. From every, even minimally decent and well-meaning human being and also to everyone that everyone should be a blessing to everyone else and we're going to I'm going to open soon an opportunity for us to bless each other and to ask for blessings if you guys are interested in that on our birthday we have a special power to bless because our mazel is dominant our mazel is flowing all the way down super strong and healthy we just ended Adar here, still Adar, we're in many parts of the world, certainly where the eclipse is, the last day of Adar. In Adar, the mazel of Adar is healthy. In Nisan, the, ma the mazel of humanity is dominating. The model of Adam, the rectified man. May we all be Adam. We are. May we all experience that for real. May all those who are lonely find true love, faithful, gorgeous, wonderful love. May all those who need restoration on any level be restored, regenerated, rejuvenated, renewed. May all those who need wisdom receive that wisdom in great abundance in, in ways that connect the dots, fill in the pieces of the puzzle, create coherence, connection. May that wisdom running through that new circuitry illuminate all of mankind and starting right now, or let's say on a new level that starts right now. When we're here together, in prayer, and I hope you're praying with me and feel free to pray also in your own words. When we're here together, we are, we are a collective vessel to receive. And that way we can receive far, far, far more than any of us can alone. And again, we are receiving on behalf of everyone and everything. So I'm asking Hashem himself to add to this prayer, to all of our prayers, right here and right now, in his own words, in the highest, deepest, most powerful vibration, anything that, that we would ask for if we realized we should. 
in the ways that we realized we that we would realize we should, that we would desire to. So let Hashem speak for us to Himself in prayer to align with us totally and completely in a way that uplifts, uplifts what it means for us to be human and uplifts and reveals what it means for us to be created in the image of the divine. This is a new day. This is a new era. This is a new world. The eclipse is just a part of it. I have no idea what's going to happen with the eclipse or what the hullabaloo really means. But I can tell you that the energies that are coming in from this first day of Nisan, if we can receive them, the game will turn supernatural and that's what it's supposed to do. That's what Nisan is meant to bring. I'll say more about it soon. So I'm gonna be silent just so that everybody can spend a minute articulating, connecting with your heart, connecting with your soul, adding your prayers. And I want to I want to add that any what any good thing that anyone asks for that would benefit any or all of us should do so, that would benefit anyone or everyone should do so, so that we form a tapestry that's infinitely bigger than any of us alone. Amen. Can you rest? So now we'll, we'll pray in silence for about a minute. I think the eclipse is in totality in New Mexico for the past three, four minutes. Part of the potential of an eclipse is that it push us to rise to a level where the forces of nature no longer control us where the stars and constellations and planets no longer control us. Because not only are we doing the will of Hashem, we are rising, deepening, revealing, opening, yearning, desiring, aligning to such a level that we are literally influencing the will of Hashem. Not only is that possible, that's what's being asked of us. So let that wash over you and through you. Add it to your prayers. another 30 seconds or so and then we'll move on so apparently all of the planets were aligned eight planets were aligned on december 28th 2022 so not millions of years ago. Okay, uh, I'm just scrolling through, scrolling through the chat. May the divine within each of us connect with each other. Yes. Okay, so I want to talk a little more about, about Rosh Chodesh Nisan. And then I, I, I would like to open the floor. And what I suggest to start with, I'm completely really, I did not make much plan for how this would go. My core desire is just to open the, the connection to Rosh Chodesh Nisan here in Israel, the you know portal, the ultimate portal between heaven and earth here in Jerusalem. I'm about two kilometers from the side of the temple, Temple Mount, <laughs> which is coming into uh, into the lens. Maybe some of you know about that. Everything can change on a dime. It depends on us. The, we are in the era of Geula, of the Messianic Redemption. 
The reason that it isn't given a specific date is because it's interactive. It's consciousness dependent. Like I said before, God himself set up the world in such a way out of his essential desire that we make the first move. In this relationship, we are the woman. We are the Shekhinah. God's essential desire is that we should shine forth and cause a reciprocal movement from him toward us. So how aligned, how expanded, how true and real, how surrendered, how open, how deeply listening, how tuned in, turned on, activated, can you be? Can we be? Can I be? And that's the main thing that's going on here. So whether we'll stay on a long time or a short time, that just depends on the flow. But I would like to talk just a little bit more about what the Rebbe has to say about this day, about Rosh, Rosh Chodesh Nisan, just to help everybody understand and to bring down the energy and the potential. It's incredibly powerful. And then I'd like to open for blessings. So the way I'd like to do that, and that's because it's our birthday, I will look at questions and comments. Please feel free to share your insights in the chat. Um, David, if you can come close the door, there's noise outside now. That'd be good. Anyway, so it's been, I've been in birthday parties, individual birthdays where people have gone around the table and each person has said something that they want. And then the group together closes their eyes and blesses. And um, depending on time, we can do some of that as well. That will help bring down our incredible power. Okay, so Rosh Chodesh Nisan, what does the Rebbe say? The Rebbe talked about the Rebbe talked about this on um, the third of Nisan in 1989 by Divine Providence. I found out about that particular Sikha, that discourse. And I learned it many times and I taught it many times on my website, gateofunity.com. It's available for free, 10-part series called Becoming a Luminary. And no, sorry, that's a different, sorry, 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 mistake. That's a different sikha also about the sun and the moon. But on the on the third of Nisan, the Rebbe talked about how we have a commandment in Torah that says this month, this month should be to you, meaning Absorb it, integrate it, take it into your being. Rosh Chodesh should be the, the head of the month. It should be the head of the month for every month. Again, to you. So the, the commandment in the Torah about this month, because it is the first month of creation, because it represents God's inner desire in creation, his thought, which is not past tense. It's not that he thought about it and then he created. No, his thought is a level of divine presence that is right here and right now. It's the innerness of reality. So God is creating us right now on the level of his intention and his thought. And he's doing so through specific vessels. And one of the most powerful is this first day of Nisan. So the Rebbe explains there that on Rosh Hashanah, the Tishrei, the Jewish New Year, the world is recreated on a higher level. I think I mentioned that earlier. The laws of nature are up-leveled. New things are possible, like internet, cell phones, whatever. So the laws of nature are removed, are, re are renewed and expanded and uplifted, but that is on a natural level. Science can replicate it. It's available for anyone. It's not called supernatural. But on the Rosh Chodesh Nisan, what's added to that picture, it's, it's the Rosh Hashanah of miracles and redemption. So that's the energy that's coming in. How does that energy, I said that we're channels between heaven and earth. We are the receivers for this divine energy. So it depends on us. It's consciousness dependent. It's intention dependent. It's action dependent. It's interactive. God cannot transmit. And I, I really want to be clear about this because I think that often we think of ourselves as like helpless and God is like he's big and mighty, which he is, of course. But the way that God himself set up the world is that he cannot transmit something if we don't receive it. And often he can't transmit it if we don't desire it and align with it. And that's just the way it is. 
That's the makeup of reality. And the reason it's like that is because that's God's deepest desire that reflects his own essence. That's who we are to God. We're the actors. We're the big players. We're in control. What stands in the way of that is we feel like victims. We feel helpless. And that's something that needs to change now. So the Rebbe said that because of this energy that's been coming in, it was first given to Jacob, Yaakov, the patriarch, and his children, who were the, the forebears of the Jewish people. It was first, this energy was first given to them so that the action of those who are connected to the Torah changes the reality that exists on the ground in a natural way. Now we have a reality. I won't talk very long. We'll open it up, up, up soon, but I just want to share this. We have a reality right now today, and I think many of us who are in a group like this realize this. There's a reality that people have manipulated through technology, maybe, who knows what, where the technology came from, through science and technology, through mind control, through all kinds of techniques and physical inventions on very subtle and powerful levels. They have created a control system that is like the, the Egypt, that is actually the current expression of the Egypt of the ancient days where the original exodus took place. The Torah tells us that it was impossible for anyone to escape from slavery in Egypt, which is one of the one of the reasons that it was so absolutely miraculous. God broke Egypt through the plagues. So as we have the up-leveling of the possibilities of potential of nature, of the natural order, like Rosh Hashanah, like Tishrei represents. So here in Nisan, as the inheritors of Yaakov, of the Jewish people, and whether you're Jewish or not, if you're connected to this mission, that includes you. If you're connected to the Torah, if you're aligned, that includes you. We started with one. There was one first man, and we are all cells in that cosmic body. But are we aligned or not aligned? What is our role and are we leaning into it? So that's the question here. But if you look at the laws of nature as a, as a game board, we are the pieces or the players that are moving the pieces around the board. And we can create a more and more advanced level of playing the game. What's on the table right now, the advanced level is to be supernatural. The advanced level is to do miracles by our nature, to align with God, with our core inheritance, with the Torah, with the mission, with the destiny, with the divine vision of redemption to such a powerful degree, a deeply integrated degree, that literally we are co-creating reality here and now. That's our mission. It's also something that I think a lot of us probably would really like, but that is actually what God needs from us. And the power to do that on a completely new level is coming in right now. The question is, how do we receive? So briefly, the Rebbe explained that in order to go to break through the laws of nature, first of all, he quoted the Baal Shem Tov who said that, he, who defined a miracle. The Baal Shem Tov said that a miracle is when something that's impossible happens for the first time. That's a miracle. But once it happened, now it's possible. So even if it seems a little bit of a stretch, it's no longer considered miraculous. It's part of nature. And when something's part of nature, we need to use it to further the mission. And the way that we break through into the miraculous day after day, moment after moment, level after level, is to break beyond our own nature. And the Rebbe explains that every time we go beyond our nature, obviously on behalf of something good, beyond our identity, beyond what our ego tells us is possible for us, what's in our comfort zone, what's in our belief system. When we break beyond, beyond that, even one tiny drop, now we're in the quantum. Now we're in the singularity. We're not repeating anymore. And as soon as we do that, we've broken through the laws of nature and all of nature expands. And again, we don't do that once because if we do it once now, it's natural. And our job is to be supernatural. So we need to do it again and again and again. That can mean learning something that stretches your consciousness. That can mean transforming one of your, transforming a, an experience of anger or sadness or shame at the root, finding the deep light inside of it. That can mean going beyond your boundaries and trying to understand someone. It can mean going beyond your boundaries in learning Torah. It can mean a deeper level of surrender. It can literally mean practicing miracles in a more direct way. 
But whatever it is, we are, I just, I just want to emphasize just two more quick points. One I said already, we're in this direct reciprocal relationship with God and the universe. You, I like to say we, but you, it means you, you are in a direct, you are in a direct reciprocal relationship with God. Yes, the almighty God, you are in a direct reciprocal relationship. You are literally creating a vessel that shines the orchoser, the returning light, the light that comes from the inside, the light that comes from below, that catalyzes a reciprocal shining of a new super, supernatural light from above. That's what's up now. That's what's up in our times. That's what's up today. That's just what's up for us. So I like to ask for people to engage. So let me see in the chat, like, how is this hitting you? What do you want to do with it? Are you willing to lean into going beyond your nature? And while I'm waiting for you to answer, the last thing I want to share right now, yes, great. Hey, Yehudis, good to see you. All right. It's really important to respond. It's really important to put your stake down in something physical and writing in the chat is doing that. Speaking is doing that. Writing any kind of action and voice is con speech is considered action because it's taking something from inside of you and putting, putting it onto the physical world. Anytime you do that, you're anchoring something, a, a, a potential that hasn't been revealed yet. You're anchoring it already into revelation. So it's really important for you and for everybody. So the last thing I want to say in terms of Rosh Chodesh Nisan for now is that there's a principle in the Torah that's called Ein Som Chinalanes, that we're not allowed to depend upon miracles. But the Rebbe explains that that is because we have to be doing our human job here. That's why we're created human. So we can't just sit and do nothing and rely on an outside force to save us. But when miracles are part of our nature, and now they are, when miracles are part of our nature, not only are we allowed to depend on miracles, we have to depend on miracles. The word somech means to depend, but it also means like to lean on. We have to lean on that miraculous power because we're, we're our part of our soul contract is to do everything, to use everything in our nature to live out a soul mission, which is again, to transform darkness into light, to reveal the essence of the soul, to live with joy, with wonder, with kindness, with beauty, with delight, with pleasure, with co-creativity, with union, with connection, with love, harmony. And sometimes, you know, setting boundaries is important too. Righteousness, let's call that righteousness, truth. These are soul qualities. These are divine qualities. And we're here to reveal those. We're here literally to reveal the inner intention of creation. What is the inner intention of creation? Redemption, the liberation of the soul, the revelation of God, a world of heaven on earth. But it's not, that That was actually, that was the world of the, of the Garden of Eden, but that was a world where man was just passive recipients. Adam and Eve were just passive recipients. They were lofty, lofty souls. They spoke to God casually, like you would speak to your best friend. There was no fear. There, was, there were no negative emotions, no guilt, no shame, no isolation. They lived with their perfect partner. Not only there were fruits on the trees, but the trees themselves were edible. The, it was in the, the Garden of Eden existed in the world of Bria, which is a much, much, it, it's the world of the archangels at that level of consciousness, the light, at, we were told that Adam could see from one end of the cosmos to the other. I'm assuming Eve could as well. But that garden was a place of passivity, receiving only. There was no ability to contribute anything just like the souls that are basking in the light, in the bliss of God's light beneath the throne of glory before they come into the bodies, they're passive recipients. They're in love. Your soul is in love with God. Why does it agree to come into your body? 
not so much fun a lot of the time. The reason is because God is telling your soul. God is so showing your soul divine sparks, literally pieces of God godliness, pieces of God himself, hidden in every single physical, emotional, spiritual, energetic thing, moment, situation, thought, word, potential that you will encounter throughout your life, each one of those contains a, a divine spark that only you are empowered to elevate and to release and reveal. When you do, you create more oneness. That spark goes back, reconnects with its ultimate source, a chain of create of a channel of, of intimate connection and partnership Passionate love is created between you and God, and a new light comes into the world every time a spark is elevated by you that never existed before. That's why the world is moving forward. We're literally driving evolution, cosmic evolution. We are driving it. Okay, so let me see what you have here. And then I'd like to start with blessings. I'm just going to check out the chat. I want the entire world healed from from cancer and tum tumors. So whenever somebody's asking for something, here's what we wanna do. Remember, on the birthday, this is the birthday of mankind. This is our birthday collectively. That doesn't mean it's not our birthday individually. Collectively means a superpower. And it's right now. So when someone asks, or say, if you wanna ask for a blessing here in the chat, and if we have time, we can open up, you know, you can take take yourself off mute. You just want to keep it short, like no stories. But um, if you want to give a blessing or ask for a blessing, that's what I want to do here. I think that's the most powerful thing we can do, at least for now. And when someone asks for something, wishes for something, bless them. Say amen, hold the intention, visualize that manifesting in actual reality. Okay, we're doing this together. D says, my heart is opening and I feel happy within. Yeah. Jennifer, it's like surrendering to the possibilities of the light rather than being caught in the chaos and fear. Yes. And I love the words you're using, Jennifer. It's surrendering to the possibilities. So surrendering is opening. It's like listening. It's receiving. It's not forcing doing. You know, there are times when we need to do, but there's only so much we can do from our human perspective. But when we surrender and open to possibilities, now we have the quantum. Now we're connected with divine light and potential. And we're partners with God. We make space for God to work with us and through us and as us. So powerful. It's scary, Donna says. It's scary to step, out, step outside of my comfort zone, but I'm doing it. This is so beautiful. Hi, Jackie. It's taking me into a new reality and changing me inside and out. Yes. Well, everything's aligned, you know. They say the, the stars are aligned. <laughs> I'm being asked to confirm my speaking language and it says Arabic. No, it's not Arabic. It's English. That never happened before. Okay. But maybe we'll all speak all languages soon. Like uh, when, when the people of Babel, who seem to be back in our generation, decided to make a tower or as some say, a space launching platform to fight with God to prevent him from, you know, wreaking havoc. And um, their punishment was to speak different languages. That's why it's called Babel. You're just babbling. So maybe we'll all speak the same language again. It does say, actually, it's a prophecy that all mankind will speak with one pure language. So we'll all understand each other. And Leanne says, yes, Dee's ready to leave this old slavery behind to know a new sense of freedom. I take vote. What, have I, what I've been praying for lately is that Hashem will have mercy on the nations and replace all the wicked <laughs> All the wicked leaders, ministers, and advisors with good and godly leaders and ministers and advisors who first and foremost love and serve Hashem with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength and love their neighbor as themselves and abide by the Torah and who will rule the people according to Hashem's will and his Torah, etc. Okay, that's a request for, that's a request for, that's a blessing. So are you guys in this with me? You want to do this? Use our blessing power? Let's change reality. Let's change it on the ground right now. Okay, so we're focusing on each of you in your own way. What Lynn, Lynn McTaggart, who does the intention experiments, she's had a lot of empirical success with this, with groups of people focusing on an intention. And the way that they do it is by visualizing the outcome. So we're holding a vision. What would that be like? So we want to, in ourselves, as we do this, I'll, I'll, I'll verbalize the, the blessing really ticked it did already. And then we're going to hold the intention for, let's say, 30 seconds or so, 45 seconds. 
once we get it clear, I just want to explain mm -hmm. how this works. So you want to hold the vision and also you want to experience the emotions of the people involved. Your emotions, other people's emotions. What would it feel like if Hashem suddenly stopped the trauma matrix? If you're not familiar, Hashem is God. This is the name means the intrinsic name of God. God's intrinsic being the oneness of God. That's what Hashem means. It's also very personal. What would it feel like if God, as a result of our prayers, our receiving, what if he said, okay, you don't need, you know, there's a discussion in the Talmud between two sages. One says the people at the end of time, we, where we are right now, we're not at the end of the world. We're at the end of these, this, this, oh, this disgusting human condition. We're at the end of exile. It's called the end of days. It's also called the, the end of the right. It's the beginning of a new era. We're right on the cusp right now. So this discussion of the sages, one says at the end of days, the people will do tshuva, they will repent, they will awaken, turn back to God, and then they will immediately be redeemed. And the other sage says, what if they don't? <laughs> what if they don't do tshuva? Then will they not be redeemed? And the first one says, if they don't awaken, repent, return to God, then God will erect a wicked king and that king will, will enact harsh decrees. And then the people will turn to God. They'll do tshuva and then they'll be redeemed. So it seems like we might be there. <laughs> so imagine if we weren't there. Imagine if God just says, all right, game change. You know, like sometimes when you do a, you do a, a digital game, you get the new level, new rules, the extra pieces. So that's what we're looking for. And what will that feel like? So imagine the leaders, imagine the wisdom, imagine the people, imagine what is possible for humanity when we're no longer oppressed, gaslighted, brainwashed, poisoned, controlled, enslaved, pitted against each other, constantly bombarded with fear and frequency. Imagine all of that. Imagine what it would be like. And what we would create, what would we, what we would invent, what would we, what we would experience. So, so we're going to just now take a space. This is actually worth at least a minute. So ready guys, we're going to visualize this. Yeah. And intended. And we're praying for it. Let's go. We're going to do a full minute on timing. If you want to connect to holy souls, tzaddikim, bring in the heavy guns, although we're heavy guns, the joy. The ecstatic disbelief, the relief, the celebration, healing. Okay, so everybody here say amen to everyone's prayers. Amen, Ken Hiratson. May the game be changed right now, right here, right now, ongoing. Thank you, Titva. Thank you, everybody. Okay, Eliza, Rifwish Lema, full and complete healing, physically and emotionally to all. So just to explain how that works, just briefly, when the soul is fully in the body, the body is fully healthy. Normally the soul is, first of all, the soul's going back and forth, back to the bliss of God. And then, oh, God wants me down here. Okay, I'm going to invest in that deeper relationship back and forth continuously. Most of the time, if you understand how to check on people's energy, you'll see that most people are, soul is not, most people are not choosing life at a high level, probably 30% average, you know, the average like ordinary day. So when the soul is 30, when you're choosing life at 30%, the soul is about 30% invested in your body. And that means that the life force is going to be at about 30% of what it could be. So refush lema, complete healing means that the souls need to come in. And to come in, life has to, what, what does a soul need to be deeply invested in the body? It needs to experience purpose, like ability to succeed in its purpose and pleasure. 
So let's hold the space for that, ready? We'll do about 30 seconds. So everyone, everyone, everyone should have a full shlema, complete healing and a complete soul embodiment physically and emotionally only for the revealed good. Let's go. Imagine what that feels like, the joy, the relief, the hospitals emptying, people regaining their powers. The wondrousness of this miraculous state that none of us could really truly imagine. What does that feel like? May we experience it for real without any further delay. Okay, and amen, amen to everybody's prayers and blessings. Um, okay, all of those who left the path of Torah should find their way back. And all, maybe all of those who haven't found Torah yet should find it. And it should be in a loving way. And gentle way. By the God, by the way, if, if somebody wants to unmute, please keep yourself on mute if you're not speaking. But if you'd like to ask for a blessing, it can be for yourself also, or for, for someone that you love, or it can, or to give a blessing. People here have been giving blessings, and I guess it's kind of a request. We're asking also, but feel free to do that. It's incredibly powerful. Remember, it's our birthday, and it's the birthday of the world. It's the birthday of mankind, which means it's the birthday of redemption. It's the birthday of God's intention. The most powerful day in the world. Okay, so we're doing connection to Torah. So what would it look like? Torah is the blueprint for creation. Torah is divine wisdom and will. Torah is, is given to bring peace to the world, truth to the world, healing to the world. There's so much confusion right now. There is so much insane, <laughs> bizarre, ridiculous, previously unimaginable levels of confusion. It's a cacophony of ridiculousness, sometimes coupled with some really unpleasant behavior. So that's only because the Torah is not known. People are not connected. The Rebbe actually said that if people had been connected to the seven mitzvahs given to all, commanded to all human beings, the Holocaust could not have happened. So we can immediately end suffering by connecting to the Torah. So we want the Torah to be available, to be open, to be appealing, to be shining, to be magnetically attracted, to be easy to share and even easier to, 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 um, to receive, to be received like thousands and thousands of times more starting now than it has ever been until now. The truth should shine. The truth sets us free. So let's just imagine what that feels like, what that looks like. The Torah is for everyone. God's blueprint, the user's manual for human beings, for the advanced game. Shifra, did you say that someone could unmute themselves to give a blessing? I'd love to give a blessing to yeah, all the parties. Yes, but let's wait. We're still in the, We're still in this blessing. So let's wait till we'll open it after we're done. Another 15 seconds. I want everybody, I, I want, I, I invite everybody to focus on where we are collectively before we move on to the next thing, because that's going to be our maximum PowerPoint. Okay. I don't know who spoke, but feel free. Thank you. It was me, Yechida. And I'm up in Svat on a very high mountain of ah. Svat. And <laughs> we're at the center of the world um, in our own bubble. And I want to get that out to everybody. They say Mashiach is going to go to Yerushalayim by way of Svat. And those of us living up here really feel that. And I want to share that with everybody and bless everyone that when they have emotional rockets, that are being fired at them and they feel their trauma triggers, just let it go and be with it in the way that those of us living up here in the North, just hear the airplanes and hear the rockets and 
hear the intercepts and hear the booms and just we just let it go. We just move on. I, I have to tell you, we heard a siren yesterday. When your emotional sirens go off or people yell at you, just keep on keep on dancing, keep on playing like we do here. We had a siren yesterday and I looked out my mirror set and shortly after people were just back out on the street. So just keep on rocking, keep on playing, keep surrendering. Fearless, fearless, blessing you all with emotional fearlessness and strength. To do the work inside. Yeah, to do the work inside and come out stronger for it, spiraling upward. Okay, so if you need emotional or any other kind of fearlessness and strength, then receive the blessing and also give the blessing for anyone who needs it. Let's let's do half a minute of that. Imagining the world where that everyone feels emotionally fearless. Physically fearless. Invincible, indomitable, joyful. Hey, yet yeah, spot is amazing. We, we were we were back in Jerusalem, but we were living there for almost a year and a half. My my daughter's wedding. There were there were a couple miss, missile interceptions overhead, but uh, the joy continued. It's a place of miracles. Okay, so also if you guys, miracles, it's such miracles. Really, we we send it all down through Jerusalem, the center of the world. We do all our holy work up here for everybody. So, yes, thank you. And that's what everybody should be doing from wherever you are, because you're there for a reason. If anybody also wants to ask, again, ask for a blessing, give a blessing, or share something, an insight about the eclipse or about where mm -hmm. the world is, all I ask is that you keep it to uh, as concise as possible. Um, if anybody, if it gets even a little bit long, I'll, I'll interrupt. So please forgive me in advance just because I want to use the time to the maximum. I know a lot of people are, you know, coming and going and want to be there. May I go in clips. Yeah, somebody speaking up, say your name. And if, if you can see the video, it's it's, 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 it's more Hi. fun. Yes, my name is Dara Lars. Is Dara Lars, is, can I go next? I yeah, sure. You can I see me. Was, Hello. Oh, I see you. Now Dara Lars. Yes, yeah. Hi. Hi, Dara. Thank you very much. Um, Where are the you? Sun is, oh, hi, the sun is behind me. I'm in California, USA, um, Southern California, United States. Um, thank you for hosting this. I would, uh, I'm would. i reading a book called Say Thank You and See Miracles by Rabbi Shalom Arush. My prayer and request and blessing for everybody is that we would um, bring in the redemption through gratitude for both the bad and the good. It's essential that we give thanks for the bad things in our lives because the Torah says that when the third temple is rebuilt, the only sacrifice will be we've got to learn right now to give thanks for the bad things in our lives and we will see miracles. <laughs> the rabbi says we can put his name on that. And um, also may I please request a blessing to be healed from ovarian cancer for me and the whole world. Wow. So, so what is your, what is your whole name? Um, by the way, Dara. Donna, if you want any, hang on one second. Don't go away. Sure. Anybody who's asking for specific healing for yourself or, or specific person, please, um, it, whether it's in the chat or out loud, you want to give, if you're Jewish, give your name and your mother's name, Hebrew, if you know it, if you're not Jewish, your name and your father's name or the person that you're asking for a blessing for, don't ask me why it goes like that. That's just the way the blessing system works. Um, and we don't need last name but we need the full first name if it's one name or two name and the mother's name if you're Jewish, the father's name if you're not. So go ahead, Dara. Okay, thank you. Yeah, my name is Dara and my father, I'm not Jewish. Um, I'm Noahide, was a British Christian and my father's name is Julian. Um, so but a blessing the daughter every... of Julian, a blessing for complete yes, and, um, Amen, many men and gratitude for every in everybody's heart for okay, so the bad as well as the good. 
So let's do that in two parts because I really want us to focus because we need to take ourselves at, we need to take this, like this is real. So we need to do this in a real way. So let's do the, let's do the macro first. The Tanya says that also, I just like to um, offer an alternate phrasing just because when we say bad, it's hard to bless for bad. But if we, if we, uh, if we understand that the bad, if we at least allow for the awareness that what appears to be bad is simply a condensed, condensed light that has a deeper transformational potential. So we can then say, thank you for the hidden good and the revealed good. If it's okay, I'd like to, I'd like to add that. And the Tanya also says, I mean, Rabbi Arush is very reliable, but the Tanya also says that when you can say yes to everything that Hashem sends your way, it all appears, if necessary, transforms into the garments of yes. So what we're doing here again, and what Dara is so important, what you're bringing here, and you should be blessed in addition for that. So should everyone here be blessed for all your intentions and all your insights and all your blessings and all your sharings and all your prayers, all of us, me too, um, Sam Ain. But what? But we need to understand this because this is part of the deep transformation. This is part of metamorphosis how we get to be, how we get to move out of our identity as being victims of the laws of nature to being supernatural co-creators. It is by aligning ourselves with everything, with the uh, with the allowance that it's all good. I say allowance because you can't go immediately to to believing in a grounded way, but as we allow, we experience, and that turns to to a grounded belief. So let's imagine that everybody is so connected to God, so connected to revealing the hidden good and embracing and celebrating the revealed good that we say yes to everything with absolute trust, with a joyous certainty. And by the way, there's a cosmic principle written in the Torah that if you have absolute trust, whatever happens will turn into absolute revealed good. So let's pray and envision that up-leveling. Starting with you, we can envision it with ourselves. This is something that we can really pray to internalize and intend to internalize. What would it feel like and look like if you could just say yes to everything and relax? What if you knew you were infinite and eternal? What if you were guaranteed that everything would turn out good? What if you integrated, absorbed, and, and vibrated totally and completely that everything that comes your way is designed to cause you ultimate pleasure growth, celebration, joy, wonder, intimate, passionate connection with God in your own soul? What if you could relax and just let it flow in and transmute alchemy? And then what if people around you could do that as well? The whole world relaxing and trusting, changing reality on a dime, embracing gratitude, and God's love and revealing it through our trust. May that be so. Hashem, may that be so. And Amen. starting now. Amen. Okay. And now Dara, the daughter of Julian. Are you still there? Oh, you moved. You moved on my screen. So you're asking for a blessing for a healing of ovarian cancer? Yes, but actually now I'm thinking of the people in Gaza, the Israelites that were kidnapped and everybody suffering over there on both sides, all of it. Okay, so we should get there, but you are you and your healing is cosmically important. Here's another thing that I want to say, and I do believe that it's part of the of switching to the matrix of redemption out of the matrix of trauma. I I, I can say this personally because... I had um, a significant amount of trauma in my life. And one of the things that happened to me, I consciously, I didn't understand what would happen, but like I said it, you know, I said, I consciously took on suffering to alleviate other, other people's suffering. And I know I reject that. I have released that. I please God have healed that. That is not the way up to redemption because if every one of us needs to put ourselves aside because there are people that are suffering worse than we are, 
nobody gets to be free. So even though we do want to shed our blessings and light and support and prayers in a super empowered way on those people who need it, and we all need it, a person can't, a person who's in jail cannot free other people from jail. So our the power of the Rosh Chodesh Nisan, and I'm speaking to everybody here, this is really important for us as a collective. I know the Jewish people are very, very, very bound to the trauma matrix, and, and probably pretty much all people are, because life is traumatic, has been very traumatic. So we need to understand that we the primary thing that we're shifting here is our relationship with God, our relationship with the matrix of creation. And, and God needs us to make this shift, like I said and will keep repeating. When it comes to a transmission of something new, it is not the transmitter, even if it's God, that has the power to complete the transmission. It is the receivers. It's us. So imagine if God wants to change the relationship with us, if the past doesn't equal the future, if we are, in fact, in a completely new era, and we're wondering why it's not materializing, what if we need to let go of the past? What if we need to let go of our bond to suffering? What if we need to, what if we need to allow Hashem, God, to heal the world? And we heal ourselves. We allow the healing in ourselves. What if we need to be at peace inside of ourselves and no longer have to suffer in order to deserve? There's a lot more to say about that, but I, I'm, I'm putting this on the table and I'm asking God for help with making this shift because it's really hard. Or it's been hard. Maybe I shouldn't even say that. It's been hard. But we're opening now the new. God is opening the new and we're receiving the new. And it requires like a forgiving of the past. Right. And a letting go of that past and it forging a new path. Okay. So let's let's do you. Let's focus on you. So Dara, the daughter of Julian, should have a complete healing of ovarian cancer and anything else, your soul should connect joyfully and deeply to every one of your cells, every one of your nerves, every one of your organs, your energy field, your soul, your body, and all <laughs> everything in between should be flowing with a clean, beautiful, holy flow that will wipe away any dysfunction instantaneously. You should be holding a feast of celebration. It's called the Suda Sada, feast of gratitude, and sharing your miracle and inspiring other people to step into a new relationship with reality themselves. And Amen. since you asked, mm -hmm. let's also hold the intention. Well, we did this already. We hold, held an intention for complete healing. So let us assume we can go back there, but let us assume that God is saying yes to our, our prayers and we don't have to keep repeating them. Thank you. We're setting our intention. We're opening to receive. Okay. Thank you for sharing Dara. Thank so you. So how about if I do one from the chat and then we can do one um, in person? Let's see. So I'm not answering questions right now just because I wanted I want to make space for the blessings. If we have time at the end, I will. So if I if I have a question that is meaningful and you want me to answer at the end, assuming we still have time, please ask it again. Okay. My Donna's asking for healing for her granddaughter and son. Her granddaughter's um, I don't know, you didn't say your granddaughter's name. Oh, Rebecca, daughter of John, and her son is Alvis, son of Earl. So Rebecca, daughter of John and Alvis, son of Earl. Let's just, so may they be completely healed again. May each of them experience their soul flowing in a deeper level in their body. May Rebecca, daughter of John and Alvis, son of Earl, choose life. Each of them, both of them, on a much, much deeper level. May their souls already sense the joy and pleasure of being alive and of living their purpose. May it be an awakening from the inside that transmutes anything that's not in harmony with their soul's deepest desires and God's deepest desires and their family's deepest desires. So let's just hold a moment of space for that. Everybody, please pray. You can pray out loud, you can pray silently and hold the vision. There's a sad energy around this. So we want to, when we have emotions, which of course we do, we need to honor those emotions. Honoring the emotions doesn't mean that we perpetuate a story about them because that connects us to the old matrix. No judgment, it just does. We just you have to be real about it. But the emotions as we feel them in, their, in our bodies, 
We want to make space for those. We want to give our loving attention to the emotions in our body. So anyone who's feeling sadness or anything else that's, you know, that you'd like to up level, focus your loving, compassionate attention on where it is in your body. What does it feel like? Does it have a temperature? Notice that we're listening here. We're not talking, we're listening. We're opening. That's what allows us to receive. So where do you feel the emotion in your body? I'm feeling sadness, especially around this, but whatever it is. So where do you feel it in your body? Again, does it have a temperature? Is it hot or cold? Does it have a shape, a size, a color? Just look at that energy, observe that energy and just see if you can get a sense of it. Is it moving? Send it some more love. Your warm attention to energy in your body raises the frequency of the energy. Just like when you raise the frequency of the molecules of ice, it turns to water. When you raise the fre frequency of the molecules of water, it turns to steam. The more the frequency is raised, the more flexible, malleable that thing can be till it can go through walls, till it can take any shape or form. So our emotions are like that too. We need to learn how to feel them in our body, let go of the story and give them love and attention. Your body's like a processing unit and many deep emotions are coming up, you guys. This is really important because this is happening in the world. It's happening right now and it's gonna be happening because people don't understand what's going on and they don't know how to deal with it. And all of us here can help. We are helping and we can continue to help. So you need to understand how this works. You need to know how to process energy in your body. Again, the way you do it is you make space to feel that thing. You let go of all the story about it. Just put it on the side. You're not talking, you're listening. You're receiving, you're observing, you're making space for. And you can even ask the energy, you can ask it, can you get bigger? Can you expand to the sides of my chest? If you feel it in your chest or stomach or head, or whatever. Can you go beyond? How big can you be? Do you want more space? Take more space. What are you made of? What do you look like? What do you like to eat for breakfast? Anything that you ask puts you in that listening space, focuses you on the energy, raises the frequency of that energy and literally transmutes. This can transmute physical issues and certainly emotional ones. So you need to know this and you need to practice it. My Rosh Chodesh gift to you. Seriously, this is going to be the, one of the most important things human beings can do. Can know. Okay, um, so everybody say amen to everyone's prayers. Lisa, hey, ready to leave the constriction of my own personal Egypt, ready for transformation, healing, connection, Geula for me and the whole world. So everybody hold the vision of leaving our personal Egypt, transformation, healing, connection, Geula for the whole world. I think we're, we're focusing in on these themes um, from more than one perspective. All right, I think I need to scroll down some more. So let's take another person live. If there's somebody, just feel free. Anyone asking for a blessing, want to give a blessing? Norman, I still, I have 99 uh, red messages, but your, oh. your, your granddaughter, Noah Henya, we need to know her mother's name, if oh. you can share that. Hi, Brenda. Um, hi, how are you? Um, thank you for doing this. I'm so excited. I'm going to try to run out right now to see the eclipse where yeah. I am. But um, I have a broken foot. And If you um, can take your camera, if you can put yourself on the camera and show us the eclipse, that would be very nice. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm running outside right now. Um, okay. Okay, um, but I have a broken foot that I got on Purim, and I would love that to be healed. And... Um, I am also, uh, and I want everybody in the world who has a broken anything to be healed. And also I am coming off of a very, very seriously bad medication that a lot of people 
uh, are on this medication and um, it's very hard to get off of. And I want everyone in the world who is on this, any kind of medication that's bad for them. Um, it's going to take me about five more months to get off of it, but mm -hmm. I want everyone, um, I don't know if you can see me, all this stuff is happening, um, that um, I just want this for everyone in the whole world. And um, and I I know I've, um, I just really miss being in the influencers. <laughs> just want to tell you that. And thank you for um, all your love. And um, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I'm in the well, elevator. Brenda, what's your, what's your mother's name? What's your um, Hebrew name? Your mother's name? Uh, no, no, it's my wrong. mother's. Uh, I'm. Oh. My name is Rana Israel, and my mother's um, Hana Baskana. Rana Israela Baskana. Yes. Okay, so Rana Israela Baskana, may you have miraculous ease and success in getting off the medication, recovering from all negative effects. May your heart be healed. May your foot be healed, and may everyone's broken bones, hearts be healed and also may everybody be easily able to be freed from all addiction and all toxic medication of any sort, whether prescribed or otherwise. So let's hold space for that. Say amen and let's hold space for that and envision that just people breaking free of their chains. What would it be like? What would be, what would happen if the pharmaceutical companies just had no customers and they all had to take up farming? or become electricians, or even if they're independently wealthy and people could just experience the freedom of a clean system and not having to be dependent on anything because the natural equanimity and happiness balance is flowing so freely. So imagine that for yourself, if it's relevant and for I mean, we all have addictions and for everyone else. And then say amen to everyone's blessings. Prayers. Okay, Ruth is asking that all children are cherished and loved. Wow. So I think we all have some awareness of at least a little bit of what's going on with children. I'm sure that most of us don't have the level of awareness that um, those involved do. It's incomprehensible on its deepest levels. And even a child who needs to feel loved or needs to feel safe and or needs to feel seen and isn't, it has such a huge effect. But the only way that we can really see and cherish our children or anyone is that we can see and cherish ourselves. So let's also include a prayer and intention that our shadow side be illuminated. And just like we practiced with feeling the energy of sadness, that we should be able to easily and intuitively and naturally and lightly and effectively and pleasurably and quickly recognize the the things from our shadow side, the judgments and the repressions and the guilt and the shame and bring it up into the light of our self-forgiveness and our compassion and our love and our embracing and our gratitude because it's all just hidden good. If it's not revealed good, like Dara said, we've already prayed for that, set an intention for that. So the healing of the shadow side, the ability to embrace true self-love, just naturally and, and intuitively, this is our birthright. It shouldn't be an issue. It's part of existence, except that we internalized the curse, the cursed voice of the snake, which creates a, a, an autoimmune condition in every single human and in humanity at large so that we're rejecting and judging and projecting and blaming. And all of this happened <laughs> in the Garden of Eden and we're living it out, but that's Gullis. That's the Gullis matrix. We're switching to the Gula matrix now, Rosh Chodesh Nisan. We're really doing this. And this is just making the connection. It's up to each of us 
with Hashem's help and with each other's help to live it out and reveal it and make new vessels for it throughout the coming year, which is going to be the most magnificent, the most turbulent, the most, I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be. It's interactive, consciousness dependent. So let's do our best to up level, up level. And then let us also envision that no one would dream of harming a child or an animal, not that I'm comparing, but that the quality of kindness is shining from every heart, both internally and externally, so that our instinct will always, everyone's instinct would be to protect the innocent on the most physical levels and on the most delicate emotional levels as well. And that we have the ability to clearly see each other because we're not suppressing. When we're suppressing parts of ourselves, we, we cannot see other people. To the degree that we can see ourselves, we gain an, a power of deep intuition to be able to see right inside of somebody else with love and with healing. And we're just at the tip of the iceberg of this, but it can blossom and grow beyond our ability to imagine with so much speed. So let's hold all of that in our intention and prayer. And always in each one of these things, feel free to pray. Please pray in your own words. See what that would feel like, how children are healed, how societies are healed, how hearts are healed, how families are healed, how communities are healed, how nations are healed, how the world is healed. Children are the center. But each of us is carrying a wounded child inside of us too. And they go together. So Hashem, please heal all the wounded children. Make all children cherished and safe, thriving and blossoming. Bringing levels of goodness and joy, happiness and health <laughs> that we can't even imagine. But let us see it and feel it starting now. Okay, so say amen. Anyone else want to speak? Shifra, Hanalei here. Hey. Yeah, we're just reaching totality here. Wait, do um, I see you? Are you on screen? I don't see it. I don't know. You won't see it on the screen. I, I It's too okay. small, I think. But um, okay. I wanted to say that I, I've gotten a real bug lately that I'd really like to see the world do a global education, multimedia, and the, the swishest and the, the best music and poetry and dance and everything of the Noahide laws. I feel that we've been actually uh, facing in one direction, and I'd like us to face forward in the direction where we can actually help people know what to, to hold on to as much as love and, and light. But there are specific um, foundations, and people are ignorant, and especially honest courts of law. Yeah. Yes. And so the, I so... I'm, I'm promoting that that please that I have a prayer that uh, people should become uh, <laughs> proponents and upholders of 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 the Noahide laws, among others. Wonderful values of caring. Was someone saying some? That, was that, that someone was saying good. something to Or was back that here. someone not on mute? Okay, so the Noahide law. The, I, I just want to explain for to make sure everybody understands. These are law. The Torah is given for all of humanity. The Jews have specific laws con connected with our personal mission, and those laws are mostly to bring down a divine light into the world through the mitzvahs and the commandments, the, the laws that are given, if you're not speaking, please put yourself on mute. The laws that are given to all humanity are divided into seven. And those laws are designed to create a sustainable society, a sustainable world. So what Hanalei is very correctly saying, it's super important, is that this is a blueprint for an inhabitable universe. 
that is a is a starting point and a an absolutely necessary foundation of truth and godliness for the world to continue. And I I might my, I'm like a little bit unsure about you know the the whether what Atlantis Lemuria I don't know about those things. Um, it hasn't been my area. And so I really don't know, like my jury's out, I'm open, but I don't know. But it does seem like there were previous cycles and previous civilizations, whether they were physical, whether they were in higher dimensions, whatever the case may be, and they're not here now. And something went wrong in previous cycles, and those previous cycles didn't have the Torah. So the Torah, again, is God's, it's the blueprint for creation, it's divine wisdom and will, and it is the prescription for all of humanity so that we don't have to wonder whether it's okay to kill people. That's one of the laws. You're not allowed to kill people. We don't have to wonder if it's okay to um, harm animals, to be cruel to animals. It's not. We don't have to wonder if it's okay to worship idols. It's not. So there's seven of these that God embedded in the world that when humanity is keeping them, the world will thrive and then we can grow from there. So Kamala is saying, asking a blessing and making a suggestion that whoever knows these, whether you're Jewish or not Jewish, should start sharing. And as always, we want to share Torah in a way that is an invitation to people and an uh, opening. May I please mention a book called Kabbalah and the Meditation for the Nations it's by Rabbi Yitzchak Ginsburg. Yitzchak Ginsburg, yes. And it's it's written for the non-Jew or anyone who wants to know about the Noahide laws. Um, I'm just looking at it right now. If anyone wants me to read them, you can ask me to um, if you want to, Shifra. But uh, it's a fantastic book by Rabbi Yitzchak Ginsburg called Kabbalah and Meditation for the Nations. Very, very, very powerful. Okay. Thank you. So we have, um, I, I'm now I'm looking at the chat and I see that somebody requested for complete quiet. My, my prayer comment. is that this should be part of popular media, that, that promoting that should be um, uh, actually the the insane for the youth especially. Amen. Okay. If you want to seven and people want to take notes so they can go start teaching it, anybody on the call, and go start teaching it from this suggestion if you if you want to hear them i have them in front of me okay so you know what Hanalea, put your contact information in the chat and your name and if anybody would like to be in touch with you with Hanalea, to find out more about this how to share it how to learn it then please do okay so yehida I, I did not see this previously but yehida asked a while ago if we could have a full minute with no words to pray so would you guys like to do that? Yes, no, yeah, okay. So let's do that, I'll time myself, I won't say anything. Is a minute enough? Two minutes better? You wanna do two minutes? One minute or two minutes? Two? Two? Okay, two minutes. Time starting now.
Okay, that's two minutes. So I'm behind in the chat and reading the chat. Is there anybody that has a burning need that you'll feel really bad if you didn't ask for a blessing? Katie, your hand's been up for a while. Do you want to speak? You're still on mute. Okay. I'm off mute now. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I need to act now before I uh, <laughs> go back to my limitations. Okay. So I'm just going to try to free flow with it and Shifra. So I would just ask that I'm just going to let what's on my heart. My heart is just pounding, come out and then the blessing you, I pray will help me uh, find where the Thanks. blessing is I'm seeking. Okay. So just thinking about this, uh, this eclipse and wondering and pondering about the idea of the moon at its new moon state when we would normally see it the least is visible right now and crowned, crowned by the sun, a light, a ring, you know, emanating from around it that illuminates it and thinking about coming out of the dar and how Haman seeking advantage that at a time when it was agreed that the redemption should be there, they should be going back to rebuild the temple. It hadn't happened yet. And then seeking to seize that opportunity, taking it as a sign that the Jews were weak and they could be annihilated. And, and everything I've been taught about the fact that the moon representing Israel at waxes and wanes and the new moon to me, to me, I'm not a scholar, but to me that, that, waning and that vulnerability and we see how Israel has been attacked and everything is lining up and now we have everything lining up in the heavens we have the planets aligning we have the moon and, and the sun and the moon at its waning being revealed through this eclipse of the sun and how we've got Tikva praying about the right, or whoever it was praying about the righteous leadership and how we want righteous leadership. We want Moshe's of every nation to come and represent and acknowledge God and to rule their inheritance, their land, the nation they've been given righteously to bring glory to God. And the concept of the fact that, you know, that clip, the klipa, what, what you teach us about these sparks are hidden within the klipa and this idea of evil contains the seed of its own destruction and, and how this idea that breaking through that klipa is the light hidden within, which is what destroys the klipa and destroys the enemy. And that it may it all be for a good sign for us now that like all of these ideas, all of these things that we are learning and have understood and that have been passed down for all these millennia would be fulfilled right now. And that the idea of a, of a small number, a remnant, just our group, I don't know how many people are here today, but the power I just feel is so great. I'm so pleased that you are having us get together and join our, ener our energy and our focus today um, so that our intention will be what dominates. Our intention. The attention, mm -hmm. intention of a few. Was there not a battle they entered into? And Hashem was like, no. Reduce the number of men who are going to go into battle. Reduce it because it will bring that glory to him. And so... Even if it's just a few of us right here, the power to change everything that's happening, to put us on that traje the trajectory and really believing that this is it and just this little remnant of people, all of us here, unsure of ourselves and, and struggling between the, the spiritual, the huge vision that we see in our own personal struggles and the soul coming in and out and our our experience coming in and out, high and low, high and low all the time. May it be now. May we all be blessed together to bring this change that can't be stopped. Um, I don't. Thank you. 
So I, what I hear you saying or feel you feel you saying yesterday, you, you mentioned this, which I've shared actually is brilliant that the moon is in its invisible state um, at the last day of the month, ready to be reborn as a sliver on the first day of the month. So Katie pointed out yesterday that the eclipse allows us to see the full moon backlit by the sun, even though we have no moon. So what's hidden can be revealed. And also somebody else pointed out, but it reminded me of what you said yesterday, Katie, that the that the moon was originally God created two great luminaries in the sky that were of equal size. And the moon complained that you can't, whatever the mystical reasons are, we won't go into it now, but the moon was diminished and the moon equals the souls and the Shekinah, the moon was sent down into exile, into concealment, into the physical world but promise that its full glory and light will be restored. So also it's not just that we see the whole thing, but it's just about the size of the sun. And the sun is shining around the moon, but it's shining toward the moon mostly. So it's it, it, it's a yichud, it's a unification of the sun and moon and very, very powerful. I and mean, your insight is very powerful. So I think I hear you saying with this idea of everything negative can, can, contains the seeds of its destruction, Maybe this isn't what you're saying, but this is what I'm hearing, that if we focus on what's inside of the shell of the outer appearance, which could look like evil, could look like darkness, could look like insanity, but we focus on the God that's within and the growth of the goodness and the revelation of redemption that's within, then that light from the inside itself destroys, breaks open the shell that is creating the, dis the dysfunction and disharmony and the pain. Is that true? That's what you're saying? So, yeah. So may that be so. So again, let's just hold a moment of vision and intention for that. That evil should destroy itself and whatever can be salvaged, which is most, should be salvaged, should be rectified. Evil should be turned. Evil should mm -hmm. be turned. Good. Should be turned may, what? Maybe evil will be turned over to good. May evil be turned over to good. Amen. So we're um we're running long. So I think what I'd like to do, if it's okay with you guys, is just to go through the chat and highlight a few of these requests. And then if anybody has a again a burning desire or need for a blessing from other people, then I want you to speak up, but let's do this first. So Debbie's asking for a complete healing for Henley Orna, Henley Orna, but the daughter of Chen Hana, who was a two-year-old drowning victim. So holding that, Rafoy Shlema, asking God, I'm saying it, but I'm asking you all to pray in your own words and just then to say amen to everybody's prayers. May she have a complete healing, miraculous, just get up and start toddling around at least as good as before, even better right away. Amen. Eliza is asking for Shalom Bais, a happy, healthy marriage and financial security. So holding that in prayer. A healed, loving, peaceful, deeply understanding, Rectified relationship, forgiveness, a new start, and a flow of abundance. As my sister-in-law once put it so beautifully, that money should be a comfort and not a concern. That's for everybody. It's another blessing. These are all, by the way, these are promises of redemption, which are going to come because it's God's vision. God is in charge and his vision will come to be the question is can we how early can we be vessels for it how powerfully and smoothly can we bring it in how much can we accelerate the process and by the way a lot of you probably know maybe not everybody does but um but there are two ways that the redemption can come one is poor and on a donkey that means the slow way be eta when going through all of the steps all of the rectifications, all of the lessons, all of the payments, all of, if you want to call it the karma, the tikkunim, 
And the other way is on Ananishmaya, it's on the clouds of heaven, an accelerated miraculous redemption. So we've already had the slow version and then some, and at some point it's meant to pick up and move from natural to miraculous. That can be any time, that can be on a dime, that can be now, but we have to open to that because again, nothing can be fully transmitted into the world unless there is a significant receiving, a significant enough receiving. So that's that's what I'm praying for for everyone. That's really the ultimate intention of channeling the energy here as we're doing together now. Okay, um, needing miracles to clear so many chains from, see when you, if you don't give your name, I'll read it, but um, it's better if you do give your name. So whoever this is, is asking for miracles to clear so many chains from for him and everyone. So clearing chains, somebody's not on mute and we hear you. If you could just put yourself on mute, if you're not speaking. Um, okay. Then Tanya says, May, oh. so David, can you mute people please again? It's very distracting. May all who are still in darkness, wake up to the truth of the one true and only God. I think we're sort of talking about that in various ways. Amen. Again, holding that vision. Everybody who asks for a blessing or gives a blessing wow. is holding their own unique perspective. So to just at least for a few moments to connect to that and to bring it down with our amen, the power of saying amen, which is amen in Hebrew, obviously, amen, it's connected with amuna. It is activating the core of the soul that's connected with God through our belief. It's a channel. And it's um, there are there are Torah sources that say that it's even more powerful to say amen than the original blessing. So please do this actively now and in the future. Um, okay. Peace, truth, and healing for all humanity supernaturally. Amen. Holding that for a few seconds. Say amen. Please neutralize. Amen. Please neutralize all hatred and fear from Faye. Thank you in advance. Neutralize all hatred and fear. Neutral. That's big. That's so timely. More than ever before. I'm just sitting here in Israel thinking of the hatred and fear that, yes, it's prophecy. No, it's not fun. No, it's not okay. Neutralize it. How do we neutralize it? Well, it's up to you, Hashem, but divine light, truth, prayer, intention, visualizing, all hatred and fear can just be neutralized. We don't have to keep playing this out. This is BS. This is just enough and more than enough. We wake up now. We don't need any more wake up calls. Amen. Okay, that every person, Cassia said, every person should have clarity of their purpose in this world and be guided toward it in a revealed manner. That's beautiful. That's powerful. Purpose is one of the two things that keeps the soul in the body. Like we said before, purpose and pleasure. So everyone should have clarity of purpose and pleasure to go with it, the pleasure of seeing it fulfilled, the pleasure of the, the rewards of being a partner in creation, physical, emotional, spiritual, and relationships in every way and be guided toward that in a revealed manner. So if you're looking for more of a sense of your purpose, and if you want other people to be connected to their purpose, imagine if all the souls were on purpose and supporting each other's purpose. You know, sometimes like lately in the last, just a quick aside, in the last year or two, especially in the last year, it started before, but it's just much stronger now. Like, uh, you know, I get these more and more glimpses of like what life should be like if it weren't interfered with and how deeply fallen and broken this world is and how powerfully gaslit, gaslit and attacked and assaulted we we have been from every angle, like basically forever and like enough. And just to really, 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 and this is important for all of us going forward, to keep imagining. In fact, I would like to suggest that commercial break, that everybody right now take a moment to take on something, a practice, a visualization that you will do daily or morning and night or three times a day and really con concretize that, self for your, that for yourself right now. 
And maybe even you'll reach out to an accountability buddy just to help you do this, at least through the month of Nissan, at least the next 30 days. And we'll be seriously downloading this energy and then bringing it into the rest of the year. Oh my gosh. To visualize what human beings really are created to be. And it's not what we see. Not with ourselves and not with anyone else. Just to have the chains removed. Just to be restored to fullness and health. Just to step out of slavery. Just the whole world. Lessons learned. Move forward. What would it be like if we were our natural selves? Even before we get to supernatural, although we're already supernatural. And there's no escaping that mission. And who would want to? But just our natural selves are so magnificent. Like a newborn child, like a little baby, like the, those open eyes, those pure, that's, that's our nature. And then, you know, it's designed to be warped and those are the chains and we're designed to build strength and wisdom to reveal our soul in our attempts to strain against the, the chains. And then we're set free. Quick little personal story. My son, my firstborn child, when he was born, he he was big and he was, his, soul, his shoulder was um, compressed during the birth and he got soldier, shoulder dystocia, which apparently can be a long-term issue of mobility. And there was this brilliant Russian doctor named Dr. Tanya. And she instructed the nursery. It's kind of a miracle. She instructed the nursery to tie his hand, the, compri the compromised arm back in the little crib that they keep the babies in, in the nursery. And it was very painful for me to see because he was big and he was really unhappy. And he was like, <laughs> like constantly pulling his hand and crying because he couldn't free it. He did have times when he, you know, I could hold him and whatever, but, but he was like that for many hours every day for three days. At the end of three days, it was over and his nerve was completely regenerated. So why I'm sharing that with you is because this is the purpose of obstacles and challenges. This is the purpose of the chains that have been imposed upon human beings. This is God's purpose. Whatever, whoever the actors are, you know, willingly or unwillingly, knowingly or unknowingly, selfishly or unselfishly are participating as slave masters. But this is the ultimate purpose that through the chaining and the compression and the fighting against it, we reveal our supernatural powers. So I just want you to know that. And that's very connected with this idea that Dara brought up of thanking God for the revealed light and the hidden light, because the hidden light is designed, the chains are designed to make you supernatural. But you don't want to become, you don't want to, you don't want to hold on to your identity as a victim of the chains. You've got to know who you are. That's the only way you'll break through. And we have to break through. Okay, Carl says, hey, Carl, thank you for all your messages. Deeply received. Um, blessings over Hashem's sovereignty and will in everyone's lives and actions. So Hashem's sovereignty should be internalized, should prevail. And quickly and as smoothly and elegantly as possible in as life embracing way as possible. Embodying faith would like to embody Hashem's presence. Let's visualize all of us embodying Hashem's presence. We're designed for that. It's just part of the redemption, part of the liberation, part of the breaking free. Okay, scrolling on. I'm way behind here. General heal, gener Generational healing for each family line. Whoever's still here, it's um, on YouTube and Zoom. Thank you for being part of this. We're co-creating together. General heal generational healing for each family line to free the souls that may be tra trapped in the matrix. Generational healing, yeah. Our DNA carries things, our families impose things, we absorb things, so it has to stop. So each of us can be, like Truman said, I think it was Truman who said, the buck stops here, everyone passes the buck, the buck, the buck stops here. So let's each, if you're in agreement with this, the buck stops here. I am no longer, and you can say this, and you can say it as a prayer, you can say it as an intention. 
I'm no longer agreeing to carry out and carry forth the imprisonment of my general, my generational line, my lineage. And I'm asking for absolute blessing and peaceful, uplifting, wondrous, miraculous, joyful, pleasurable, magical help to get free of it, to transmute it, to activate, to deactivate the, the trauma DNA and to activate the DNA of the imaginal cells that we're here to be representing the future of humanity through our own beings. Shem, please help us with that. That is so crucial. So anyone who's down for that, who's into that, who wants to say the buck stops here and ask for help with that, do so now. And imagine your family free of all that garbage. Your children, your children's children, their children, their children, your parents, your parents' parents, and don't forget you. We're all we're not just receivers, we're broadcasting all the time into the world. And then others have to receive what we're broadcasting, and then we get it back, goes to the Earth's magnetic field and shines back on us. This has got to change now. The buck stops here. Ezrat Hashem, with Hashem's help. That's the intention. Say Amen. I say Amen. Okay. Karen Bat Yaakov, but I'm not sure what Karen is asking for. But Hashem, please answer the prayers and heart's desires for the revealed abundant good for Karen Bat Yaakov. And to everybody else who's asking here whether they write it, speak it, or just ask it in their hearts. Say amen. Refush Lema, complete healing for Zila Bas Devashka. Zila Devashka. And Yol, the son of Nechama Gittel. Yol ben Nechama Gittel. Shem, please, complete healing for both of these precious people and for all precious people. Miraculously and now, amen, may the hospitals be empty. May the pharmaceutical companies find new means of employment. May the wheelchair companies turn their wheelchairs into cool tech devices to enhance fun for people. Amen. Um, okay, 40, 43, 43 Blue Bunny says it was cloudy here. I heard that's a good sign for the place you live. Yeah, you know, the Rebbe said that. <laughs> There's, the, the eclipse has been very confusing, like in terms of Torah. And I'm kind of feeling like we just, if, if we are in a different matrix, none of it matters. And we're not tied to, we're not fatalistic, we're not tied to any kind of destiny, we're not even allowed to put ourselves under destiny, under the stars. Like I said earlier, we are supposed to be above the stars, above the astrological influences. But the Rebbe did say that um, traditionally, the presence of seeing an eclipse is considered a warning. And um, and the question was asked, well, if it's a natural, predictable, predictable phenomenon, how can it be like a warning or a punishment or response to human behavior? And the answer, one of the Rebbe's, one of the Rebbe's many answers was, well, if if, a, if, a, if an eclipse is meant to happen, but a, but it's not meant for a person, that'll be cloudy. <laughs> they won't see it. But there are other good interpretations too. Blessings for Rabbi Alona Nava. Carl is asking. Tammy says almost covered here in Illinois. I haven't. Seen, I guess there are going to be a lot of pictures. I haven't seen anything yet. Te Taya Bella, Bella is asking blessings for her grandson Ashton Felix Linder. He has a name and he's not born yet. I never heard of that. And his mother is Claudia. Okay, blessings for Ashton Felix and his mother Claudia for a healthy birth and a healthy life, healthy recovered recovery. Okay, um, Cassie is asking for blessing for Rivkalea Baschana. 
daughter of Ghana. Amen. Can you hear us own? Elise is asking for a, a complete healing. Refush Lima for Tehila Chai Bas Orasara. I hope you guys are focusing. And I want I want to just up the ante here by invoking the Torah principle that Kol Hamavarach Nisbarech Bebekasa Shalakadish Barahu Shet Tafasta Maruba Al Haikar. That everyone who blesses should be blessed with the blessings of the Holy One, blessed be He, who adds additionally to the blessing over the original blessing. So when you bless, there's reciprocity, and we're invoking that. So the more sincerely you bless, the more God should not only bless you, but add an additional level of blessing over the blessing. We're here to be blessings to ourselves and, and to each other, to the world. That's what we're here for. And that's another thing that we can take into the year if you choose to visualize this. And if you want to share what you're taking on, that brings it down. So are you are you intending and praying and aligning with that intention in a commitment to be imperfect, an imperfect, a perfect commitment, but to be a blessing, not a victim, but a blessing. And remember, you can only free other people when you can free yourself. You can bless other people even when you are not free, but we want to be a blessing on the deepest level and help free humanity. Okay, daughter Floyd, is asking blessings for son John and grandson Johnny. May Rebecca, daughter of Floyd, and her son John and grandson Johnny be blessed in revealed abundant ways. Blessings from Turks and, Ka Ka I don't even know how to say that, Kaikos, Kaikos, hi Gabby. It's so good to see you. Okay, Tikva is asking for a complete Healing Rufus Shlema for her daughter Lindsay Ray, but Patrick Dean and granddaughter Lillian Grace, but Brandon Marcus. So complete healing. And you know what? We're not all going to have time to ask for everybody. So let's just take a moment now. And everybody can quietly name the people that you would like to, that you need to request, you want to request a complete healing for. And we'll give this about 30 seconds and then we'll all say amen. So with the, with deep intention. And also I'm asking that anyone that we don't mention who needs or desires a complete healing, whether it's spiritual, physical, emotional, financial, relationship, anything mental should be completely, abundantly, miraculously healed. So let's take 30 seconds now to ask for our loved ones. and healthy births, if that's up, and for ourselves. That was a little longer because this is so deep. Amen. To all requests for Ruf Lema. And also for all of the requests that were forgotten or that we didn't have time to say, but we would have had we thought of it or had we had time. And for everybody that desires and needs to be healed a promise of redemption, no sickness. Let it start to come in right now, big time. Rufo Shlema for Analia and Bet, but Hannah's 
for Oraliba but Sibilea. I'll just read these because they were written, but they're included already. Ari Raphael ben Oraliba, Dodi Shoshan ben Oraliba, Sandy about Esther Ethel Miller, Blessings for Deep Healing of My Nervous System and the Nervous System of Israel. <laughs> yeah, I'm only laughing because it's, you know, that ironic laugh. Yeah, the nervous system of Israel could use some serious healing. Wow. And Magiela, no, it's time. Amen. Blessings, miracles, and healing to Rachel Howard, daughter of Don Howard, and Eric Garza, son of Bonifacio, to be re re released from the chains of her past partners. So healing from traumatic relationships, healing from trauma, and blessings, miracles, and healing to all. Amen. Clarity of mind, body, and spirit for all resulting men mental health, reversal of dementia. Amen. My mother had dementia. It's horrific. New awareness of truth and new ability to connect with self, others, and Hashem in happy and healthy relationships. Amen. I see people are already doing amens. Um, I'm way behind here. And amen to all the blessings. A healing for a blessing with gratitude to eliminate glaucoma, Ariel, and anyone else who has it, and restore 2020 vision for me and anyone who requires this healing. Et to Rachel Bas Hilafega. And I'm asking for Fushlema for Chayamushka Bas Shifrachana to restore, um, to open her tear ducts and restore her ability to have tears miraculously and immediately. And for every kind of blessing, it would feel good. Devakis mean, meaning cleaving to the Holy One for all of creation. Amen. Clinging to God eternally and universally. Amen. May we all singles find this year our soul partner. Amen. May all those who seek love. We said this before, but we say it again. May all those who are seeking their soulmate, soul partner, this year, early this year, not only find, but be found by. Like, I want everyone to be blessed that your soul partner should find you. You shouldn't even have. Just be, just shine your light. Just be yourself. Just connect and eat and be found. That actually happened to me. So to, I, I mean that in a heartfelt way. Extinguishing of chemical trails and poisonous waters and poisonous food supplies. Amen. But, you know, look at you guys. I know this is going on long, although it is a once in a lifetime convergence here. And I think it's worth it. But we're not going to go on that much longer. But look at just what people are putting on the table. Look at how much has been stacked against us. Look at how many blessings and miracles and prayers and salvations, Ulos and Yeshuos that, that we need. And we haven't even started talking about like, you know, success, like be a multimillionaire, have a beautiful house. Those things are good too. Those things are great. Lightness, freedom, adventure, true abundance in every area. We need to be freed. It's time. But again, God can only transmit what we can receive, what we're willing to receive, what we can, what we will do the work to receive because our vessels have to continuously expand and mature to receive the kind of light that we want and need and it's time and it's time and it's time for us to have. So that's our part and that's ultimately what we keep asking for, what I'm asking for. And again, I'm just suggesting, inviting and really requesting that everybody here take on something. This is really connected with the metamorphosis challenge anyway, which I'm going to be continuing throughout Nissan. But take on, don't wait. It's Rosh Chodesh Nissan. This is the convergence. The eclipse is still going on. The humanity's attention is still hyper-focused. The Earth's magnetic field is still being affected. And so many things that we don't even see for the good, for the godly and good. So take on Commit, visualize, intend practices that you will do, visualizations, activities, alignments, prayers, like every day or more than once a day, at least for Nissan, to help you to become a vessel, to receive, integrate, and shine forth much, much higher levels of miraculous divine light. We're here for that. Surrendering and open to receive personal blessings, to receive re release past traumas and open to the new miracles in my life and through my own joy and open others to inner joy. This is crucial. This is what the metamorphosis challenge is about because if we're still tied to our past traumas, 
We're connected to the trauma matrix. Our cells are attracting, seeking, not consciously, even more powerfully, unconsciously, seeking more evidence of trauma, more evidence of victim, more evidence of God doesn't care, or I don't deserve, or I will never have, or it's not fair, or I'm in despair, all that stuff. So we can change that. It takes active work, commitment, prayer. That's what we're here to do. So I'm main to that. Okay. I hope you guys are reading the chat because people are giving each other blessings. Complete victory for Israel, a miracle from Hashem that's so undeniable that all Jews have a conscious shift to Torah and unity. This includes all hostages released. Yes. Amen. And all wounded healed and all protected. Israel's the heart of the world. And the fact that the world is so, um, so much of the world is turned against Israel. Okay, Israel's government has some things to answer for, for sure. But so do all governments. But the land itself, the people, is alive, supernaturally, miraculously, joyfully illuminated and alive. So the fact that people are so turned against Israel and Israel is the heart of the world, right? Like right now, some of you might, this is crazy. I just found out about this last night, but there are a lot of people who apparently there's, I don't want to get into the details and to take the time, but um, the word has gone out incorrectly, I think, um, as so many things, but the word has gone out amongst a lot of people online that there's a secret plot here to sacrifice the red heifer and um, which is associated with building the temple, purification for the people and building, being able to build the temple. So they're like circulating petitions that this shouldn't be allowed because as soon as the red heifer is sacrificed, then, then the temple is going to be built and the mosque is going to be destroyed and it's going to be World War III. And this is so distorted, so ridiculous. Plus, if people realize you know, in the times of Shlomo and the Solomon, the times of the temple, the world was sustained by the offerings that the nations brought to the temple on the Temple Mount, which is basically right down the street here. And if people understood that they're putting, they're stabbing themselves in the heart. And that's part of, I think, what many are praying for, that people should be connected to the Torah and the light of the Torah, the truth, the seven mitzvahs, and God, their own purpose. So it all goes together. And that's really the bottom line, the underlying movement of what's happening here in our times. Um, Dara is blessing everybody with complete healing and total soul investment. Peace within myself, so inner peace. Amen for all of us. May Hashem heal us of story and stuckness that we don't even understand. Amen. The sky just went dark above us. The sun is about 50% blocked. I wish somebody was bringing the eclipse live. Is anybody seeing the eclipse live on your can you on your camera? We can't see it at all. Let our global healing bring down the strongholds of the enemy. Amen. Okay, I don't know how many more of these that there are. I'm just going really fast here. Um Okay, may the entire correct corrupt medical system be turned into real healing through nourishment and the herbs that God created. Real healing spiritually, mentally, and physically. Amen. Multimillionaire abundance in all areas of life with joy and miracles for Edna Sara Bas Sara Imeno. Amen. Okay, so um, I'm just going to, I'm not going to keep reading these. What I'm going to ask everybody to do is just focus on God is reading them. Maybe most people here have read them while I'm speaking, but um, but just let's just focus a group intention that all requests that were written here, all requests that were made here, and all requests that weren't made but could have been made, that we are asking Hashem to grant all of this, these requests. So let's spend another minute in silence doing that and also your personal prayers. And then we'll conclude the blessing giving.
All right, amen. One big group, amen. In fact, let's say it three times to all the prayers and blessings. Amen, amen, amen. Can ye ratzon, may it be Hashem's will to fulfill all of our blessings, prayers, and requests in absolute fullness and abundance, miraculously, supernaturally, in the most grounded and incredible revealed ways that astound us, that absolutely astound us. And then may it keep coming. May all of the potential of Rosh Chodesh Nisan and Nisan and the year 5784 and the year 2024, all that has been operating under the surface for the freedom of mankind, may it be complete. May we all see it. May all the captives be freed, including the hostages, including every captive. May all the evil be withered and blow away like dust, as the Torah says. May all the inner souls, the inner light shine. May the exile end. May we all be dis we just kick this exile trauma matrix over the cliff and all of its gravity be completely eliminated and the, the tractor field of the matrix of redemption, miracles, transformation, godliness, heaven on earth, joy, wonder, beauty, co-creativity, union, soul to soul, heart to heart, happiness, celebration, joy, wonder, wealth, abundance, flow, freedom, eternity, infinity, life, discovery, adventure, exploration, self-expression, fearlessness, tenderness, love, incredible wellness, plus, 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 may it just all be activated and revealed. The time is now. Amen. May it be. Okay, so we've gone long and not so long. So is there anybody that needs to say something, wants to say something? Feel free to leave. A lot of people have felt free to leave, and that's totally understandable. This isn't a, this isn't a like exciting um, class or a done for you situation. This is where we are all participating. This is actually work. This is holy work, and thank you for being part of it. This is where every one of us lends ourselves to the divine mission, connecting to these potentials and energies through ourselves every aspect of ourselves and to each other, to our own potential and everyone else's potential. And that's deep work. And in doing that, we, we are bringing down true miracles. And there's no question in my mind that the process of redemption is lightning and every prophecy is malleable. You need to know that. So we are in prophetic times and we are seeing prophecies being <laughs> coming true literally, but you have to know, we all have to know, and just in the most calm and peaceful way, in a knowing way, because God says this, the Torah says this, that the divine, every prophecy that is good will be fulfilled, must be fulfilled in literal, physical actuality. And that certainly includes the prophecy and the promise of redemption, which is a world of heaven on earth, where there's no sickness, no poverty, no war, no violence, no jealousy, no hunger, no competition, but only wondrous revealed good, not even any death. In fact, those that we lost will be restored. That's God's promise. It may be a little bit hard to imagine because we've been really beaten up and not just now, but forever since this whole story started. And we just need to forgive all that and we need to move forward. And I'll be talking a lot more about that in future broadcasts throughout Nissan. So those happen on YouTube and Twitter and Facebook. So if you're not part of that and you want to be, then you should subscribe. But this is our work and this is part of our metamorphosis and the transformation is deep, inner, personal, and real. And every person who transforms any part of themselves, who heals any trauma, who changes any cell receptor, who changes a piece of brain wiring, who changes intention, who focuses 
on the future rather than the past. And that is an imperfect process because we keep getting triggered into the past. But every time we get triggered, we get to do a transformation. We get to move it forward. We get to see where our blind spot was and we get to heal another piece of ourselves. Every person who does that is creating a new reality. But really, but really working with God to manifest his intention and creation. Our souls came down for this. There is absolutely no question. Even if it's very up-leveled, it's going to be very turbulent because the old is leaving and the new is coming in. Birth, even, you know, even the most beautiful aligned birth has some cataclysmic forces involved. So we really, really, really need to intend. I'm avoiding using the word commit, but I do think commit is appropriate. In an imperfect way with a, you know, we're not taking vows, we're not signing contracts, but we are intending and committing, I am anyway, to lean into the future and to work with myself together with Hashem's God's support and blessings and I have many blessings and support of people in my life. So, and we are a soul tribe, but to really transform my ground of being so that it's not tied anymore to the traumatic past, but rather it is holding the frequency of the incoming future. And downloading and integrating and absorbing the potential for total, ongoing, ever-increasing miracles by our nature, which is coming in in a whole new level right now. So if you feel like that as well, download it right now while we're still together. Hi, Marie. Good to see you. I think about you a lot. May you experience the unexpected end to all beatings and beginnings of gentle, beautiful massages. Okay, so that's what I have to say. If anybody else wants to add anything, feel free to just pop on and do it before we end. Shifra, it's to Vargila. May you be blessed. Hi, Devorgila. One person at a time, though. <laughs> yeah, one. So if you're not Devor speaking, Devor me, okay, just so we don't have background noise. Yeah, I just wanted I wanted to honor you, Shifra Khana, for fulfilling your purpose and for being such an exemplary role model of transformation in your own life. In your own life, the fact is you've created this community and we're all here joining in this huge world transformation uh, because of your leadership. So I want to honor you with so much gratitude on behalf of everyone here. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Amen, sister. Amen. Devorah Gila, you put the words out of my mouth. I love you, sister. Well done. I, I just want to say also, like, it, I'm not sure people understand this. And it, it, I really appreciate, I do put in a tremendous amount of work in my personal life and in my professional life. I do. It's not, it's, it's true. And um, I'm, I want to let that in. Because like probably almost everybody else here, I'm constantly looking at what I'm not doing enough and almost completely ignoring what I am doing. That's not okay anymore. And I also want to say at the same time, it's really true. Like I've been saying the whole time about this teacher, student, giver, receiver relationship that we all are in. You know, we're all in both roles at different times, but all of us, this is just an example of, of how no matter how much you want to give and no, much how, no matter how much you have to give, you can only be the person that you're here to be if there are people that are willing to receive. Because, uh, and it, that's true for God. It's just true for me as an example. If you weren't willing to show up, I mean, you've been on with me for almost two hours. Everybody's out having eclipse things. You know, I, I didn't know if anybody would come on or if many people would come on and it's long and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's work. So, it's really, really true that none of us is standing alone. In fact, I've been thinking a lot that this is one of the real secrets to the deeper supernatural, that we have to stop being closed systems. 
because each one of us by ourselves, th there needs to, we need to have the ability to not only um, connect to our higher selves and our potential, but we actually have to be able to flow it out and have it received. And we have to be receiving at the same time. And only through being part of something bigger can we be connected to our bigger supernatural self because it's not it's not a closed system it's not stuck in here anyway i really want to thank you guys because it is really really true that the things that i the blessings that i've been given in being able to accomplish you know some of my desires and and build some influence and i really would appreciate a blessing that it could that it seriously increase that my book be as powerful as I hope God wants it to be. I know God wants it to be, and I hope I can help it to be. That should be quick and easy, that it should have tremendous influence that, you know, they'd be able to be consistent in showing up much more consistent because I do see that that is how people um, really, really build their ability to, um, to be received. But the fact that you guys show up and, and, and care to hear me, can you, uh, I mean, some of you are in a similar position, but if you're not, can you imagine? Or if you are, you know what it feels like. It's just unbelievable. It's unbelievable to be with your soul tribe. It's unbelievable to be able to speak from your being, from your heart, to share things that are so real and important to you and have people that are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uplifting for me. That's healing for me. I agree with that. I receive that. I, I want to shine that. I want to be that. It's What does that do for me? I'm speaking to you most. Can we give you 30 seconds of quiet and we're all just going to pour it out to you? And it, can you just receive it for 30 seconds or one minute? Yeah. Yes. Because it's all, that. Yeah. of the eclipse. Let's, I am doing it because all, of the eclipse. Let's <laughs> all just pray. Let's all just pray for Shifra right now. Just everybody to go deep into our hearts. All the things we prayed for everybody and all the things we heard about prayers for everybody and all the things we prayed for ourselves. I request that we all just shine that right now toward our beautiful hostess who gives so much and still doesn't get how great she is. Or Gila, I'm not timing. You have to talk. It's more than 30 seconds. Kathleen, you're on mute. Can I talk? Yes, are you asking me? Yeah. <laughs> I was I was just receiving. Yeah, uh, yeah. Amen. 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 May everything that you've Amen, Amen, Amen. Be fully integrated okay. into my body, into my everything in the most incredibly supernaturally and naturally healing ways, physically, Amazing. emotionally, spiritually, and flowing out to my loved ones and to their loved ones and to your loved ones and on and on. Deeper. Thank you. Nobody ever did that for me before online. I really appreciate it. Oh.
I'm very glad and Excellent. nice that Devora Gila went first because I wanted to do that. And I always know that whatever she has to say is going to couple with what I have to say because we're super close and we get each oh, other. Oh, I thought that was Devora Gila. It was you, Yakita. No, it's Yakita. Thank you. Absolutely. Wow. It's right. Devora oh, Gila you. and I, Yakita, you. you know, it's okay. It's, it's, it's from her high mountain and spot, from her high mountain and spot, bringing down the, bringing down the light of heaven yeah. all the way down to, into me. All the way into you. Take it with you. Have the best night's sleep ever. Have the best Rosh Chodesh okay. Nisan ever. And just take okay. it and hold it and keep giving it away. You're beautiful. Amen. 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 Thank, Thank you so much. much. Hi, Kathy uh -huh. Marie. So good to see you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'm just going to sit here for a minute. If anybody wants to jump on and talk, I'm still here. If you want to leave, um, do so. Shifra. Yeah. Are you here? Yeah. It's Esther Batya. Esther Batya. Yeah, yeah. Hi. I want to thank you so much for your efforts to find your light inside yourself. Because in this way, you are helping us to find our light inside ourselves. Thank you so much. And your thank you. Efforts, yeah, your efforts are helping us to in our effort to find this past that is not so easy in the middle of so much darkness, we are finding our light inside ourselves together with you. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much. And it's really good to hear you. Yeah. And you're also in spot, I I'm assuming. Yeah. I just came back. Yeah. Yeah. So it's I just want to say, I'm, I'm probably not the only one feeling this, but I don't even, you said darkness and I'm like darkness. Like this is when I'm with you guys, there's only light and that yes. just goes to show, right? That just goes to show. Yes. I, I, I want to thank you, Shifra. And all of you who are here, because just Shifra by yourself, you know, you don't feel, you don't, it's the energy of all of us being together. But every group is blessed yeah. to have someone who raises themselves up to be willing to take on the yoke of leadership to guide everyone. Because otherwise we, you know, it's like a choir without a, without an instructor. That's called the privilege and honor and blessing of leadership. But yes, it is, but it's hard work. Most of us don't want to do it. We don't want to. And you don't even want to probably, but you do it and it is a, it's a blessing to us all. And when I found you a number of years ago, I didn't find you, the Hashem led me to you. I had been feeling alone and not because I don't have a community of people who believe. It was that the fire within me of this anticip anticipation and desire for the, for the change that we are embarking on, most of the people that I love and who are wonderful, that fire, that future frightened them. And, and it didn't resonate with joy or it seemed too far off or it seemed like a story that, that yes, we in faith are waiting for. But when I found you and your conferences, the, the Gula Summits, everything changed. I went from feeling alone and not being a leader who could lead and rally everyone around me. That's not my gift. I couldn't do it. And it was challenging to maintain it on my own. But when when Hashem brought me to you in this entire community, it was what I needed and had been praying for that I would have those other imaginal cells around me that I'd find other people were saying, yes, let this excitement continue. We are excited. We can make this happen. That's what you've did. You've changed my life. You don't know me. I am just this woman in Wisconsin. I, I am this Gentile born into this world with all of my entire story. And here, your life has touched my life. In all of these lives, I am not the same person. And I am emboldened and more excited wow. and comforted, so comforted by all of your voices and your intentions not all the time is our tribe right next to us. And, and they are, but some of the most powerful connections. So Shem is placed far away from us. And it is a mystery to me. And it's amazing. And I'm so glad. And there's no coincidence. So you and everyone here 
all of the people that you interview have changed me, changed me. I am different. I am a different person. And I'm so glad. So, yay for all of us. We are doing it. I believe it. We are doing it. And with just a few of us, the Lord will be all the more glorified. Amen. But we are Thank you so much the, uh, to you, to everybody who's writing me, to you, Katie, to every, to Yechida, to Devorah Gila, to everybody. It's the, the Rebbe said in 1991, a kind of a landmark speech. He said that, he said, I've done everything I can to bring Mashiach here and now, and everything I have, I have done has been hevel meaning it's been nothing. It's nothing. It amounts to nothing because Mashiach hasn't come yet. And all I can do now is to give it over to you. And he said in Yiddish, do everything. Do, else, do, every, do everything that you can, everything in your power. And may there be 10 among you, 10 people among you of Am Kashe Arif, which is um, a kind of, it means of the stick neck, the stiff neck people. You know, it's it's used a lot to criticize us, but it's also it's you know stubbornness has, has is a two double edged sword. If we weren't stiff necked, we would not have held on to like my friend Gila said today the nuclear code of creation held on to it in the midst of all persecution, in the face of all persecution and efforts to destroy it. We held on, and it's being released into creation now, like nuclear force, the nuclear football. But anyway. He said that maybe there may there be ten found among you of the stiff neck people who will not give up and will until until God agrees to bring Mashiach. I, I don't remember every single word by heart, but basically, and may there be found this is what I wanted to say, may there be found amongst you one or two or three who know what needs to be done and how it should be done. One or two or three. So when we transform on a on a kind of superficial level, I know it doesn't feel superficial, but you know when we're still in the same matrix, when we're still in the same dimension of reality, it's it's going to be on some level superficial. But I believe, and I'm believing more and more, that if one one person, much less two or three people, can literally do the metamorphosis, can literally disconnect from the field of trauma that has been with us since the exile from the Garden of Eden and connect to the matrix of the future. I mean, the inner Torah is all about this, but who's doing it? Who's doing it? And what does it take to do it? And that's the question I have, and I'm, I'm discovering answers. Will they be complete enough to do the job? Maybe. I don't know. You know, that's, I'm, I'm in a relationship, even writing the book. It's a quest. Like I, I, I resisted the book for a long time because it's really the premise is that we're supernatural. The the premise is that we might maybe don't even have to die. That's a very bold premise. So I have to examine, you know, what is life and why does, what, what, what causes a break in life and what causes more life. And, and those are real questions that have real answers and what it's coming to with where I am right now. And that's with the metamorphosis challenge. Um, which I'm doing myself. That's why I'm sharing it with other people. Got my bracelet on. Um, is it is that it's got to come into the cells? That our cells, the body, is what connects us to a matrix. So our mind, our belief, that matters. Our consciousness matters so much. Our emotions matter so much. But we will continue to be in some ways tied to those, to those, to the old levels of those things, to our triggers. To that matrix until we can actually change the consciousness of the body, the conscious, the wiring of the brain and the receptors of the cells. And that is, I mean, I, I call it work, but it's not like it's unpleasant work. The way life has been is unpleasant. <laughs> right. It just confronting to the ego and the identity. It's just this, it's confronting to the addictions that our cells have to the old, to the traumatic, to the victimhood. So in that sense, it's work, but it's, you know, I've had, I had twice in the last week, I had a sudden seemingly causeless, causeless 
massive flash of absolute stunning joy out of nowhere. And that's because of the work I've been doing. And that's just a glimpse. That's a little reward, you know? So that's what I want for all of us. Anybody who's willing to be into it, because that's going to change the world. Not to mention our lives. Okay. And that's, that's, you know, our bodies have to get out of prison, not just our souls. Right. And Egypt, our souls got out of prison. Now it's time for the rest of us. We're, you know, we're back at the, we're back in, at the threshold of redemption. Actually, we're in the process. Now we're not at the threshold. Why is it taking this long? Because this is as long as it's taking us because it's interactive. It's consciousness dependent because we are the receivers. We have to have, I'll just repeat, we have to have that deep, passionate desire to receive. God, I'm opening. I'm ready. I want. The parcher describes it says the lips have to salivate with this, you know, desire to receive the new, to receive the deeper, to unite with Hashem, to unite with our souls, to unfold into the unknown. The ego is not into that. The soul is here for that. And the mind, the part of the mind called the nefesh cyclus, it's actually the intelligent soul. It's a, it's a free part of the soul that can choose between I'm going to feed my mind with this or with that. So that is our free choice place in terms of this work. And before you go, make a choice. Make a choice, but a real choice. Make a decision. Cut off. Say no to what to say no to what you no longer want, and a real a real no. Yeah. And then say yes to what you are meant to have and what you are meant to reveal, and that is only going to emerge as we lean in, listen, and receive, because we cannot. We have no lived experience of a healthy world. We have no lived experience of freedom. We have no lived experience of essential joy on an, on a lasting basis. We, ha we have no lived experience of absolute intimate union with God, maybe glimpses in the past year and a half or so. I've had some powerful glimpses that were startling, but it's not my everyday lived experience, but it can be, and it is destined to be. So we are the channels we are, the Rebbe said many times, we're the last generation of, of exile and the first generation of redemption, which means we have both programs inside of ourselves. Metamorphosis has a caterpillar and a butterfly. The caterpillar needs to melt down. And the butterfly, the imaginal cells of the future version, the butterfly, need to activate. What does that mean for us? That means that we, all of the old attachments to trauma, including the cellular, need to melt. It's a conscious work that affects the unconscious, that affects every part of us. And at the same time, the vision, the desires of the soul, what do you want in life most deeply? If you want a cabin in the woods, why do you want it? Do you want to experience nature? Do you want to experience harmony? Do you want to experience sovereignty? Those are attributes of the soul. Those are divine desires. So when we get clarity and vibrancy, an alignment with these core soul desires that activates the imaginal cells that pull us into the future. And then there's just the work of navigating, of noticing the triggers, of turning the bracelet, of being grateful, of, in, of, of, of envisioning writing down your desires and really moving them, memorizing them, embedding them in your brain so that they're moving around in your head all day long in the background or foreground. Notice being grateful for everything. It's the silliest ways. Learning deep Torah. Connecting to God through conscious prayer. Receiving prayer. Trusting prayer. Changing that relationship. That's key. Learning to love yourself. Working with your shadow side. The work of feeling the, the, the energy in the body that we touched on earlier. And so much more. These are the tools. Divine divinely gifted tools that can aid us in serious, serious metamorphosis. Now, while the world goes forward and shakes, also, see, we're not all in the same place. And that's another thing I want to say to whoever's left here, or I guess we'll put up a replay. David, are you recording this? Well, there'd be one on YouTube anyway, if people want to listen, although 
most of it's a lot of blessings. Anyway, um, I just lost my train of thought. There's something I really wanted to tell you. Ah, going forward, going forward. So not everybody is in the same place. And that's also really important to know. When the Jews were in Egypt, we were we were redeemed as a people. Like it talks about how God took a nation out of another nation. But the future redemption is not like that. The future redemption is designed to be individual individualized. So God takes us one at a time out of exile. And what does that mean for us? That means you decide. You work. You are a partner with God. You want to be co-creative, so co-create. So what can you do, including prayer, including receiving, including desiring, including transformational work, including healing tools, including righteous discipline, commitment, including connecting to your soul tribe, including investing in the things that will nurture your soul and amplify your soul and free you, whatever those are including going way out of your comfort zone, because that's our instruction right now, out of the comfort zone, into the miracle zone, today and again tomorrow, and then more the next day, and then more the next day, and not just one day, at a, not one time a day, but throughout the day. And what will that look like? Who knows? Who knows? It's all a discovery. That's the path that we're on in the bridge to the future. It's not built, except as we take one step at a time. As we walk forward, we're building that bridge for ourselves and for everyone. So the world is is inevitably moving toward more more turbulence. It's just part of the birth process. Can we mitigate the turbulence? I'm sure we can, but everybody's in a different place. And when someone's awake, great. You know, you can. I'm a light sleeper. If my husband, if I ask my husband to wake me up at eight o'clock, I'm usually sitting up at five to eight because that's just how I am. But there are people that you have to pour water on them and dump them out of bed for them to wake up, right? So this is a metaphor, but it's metaphorical, but it's, it's real. So there's some people that are still fighting against the Torah maliciously and deliberately. Those people need a lot more of a wake up than those of us who are working to be aligned. And then there's everything in between. So I think about this a lot and I have had to come to the realization that if Geula, if, if redemption means that everybody transforms and everybody reveals their soul, but all of us are in a different place, the ones in the beginning cannot wait for the ones of the end. That's also part of removing yourself from the, the obligation to stay in the trauma matrix until everybody's free because it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Forget about whether it's fair or not. It does, many of us would just throw ourselves off a cliff if we could save the world. God forbid. Cancel, cancel, cancel. But it doesn't work. So we have to be the portal between the past and the future. And to do that, we have to transform ourselves. And in order to do that, we have to change both our relationship with God and ourselves, the way that we use our brains, the way that we program ourselves, our cells, our focus on the past versus the future, the morphic field we connect to, the community we connect to, but also we have to understand that we live in a private universe. Each of us lives in our own individual universe. And that is on a higher dimension that becomes more obvious. So I personally can easily be triggered back into rage at the manipulation, especially in Israel. And it's taking me some iterations to realize, wait a minute, just don't fall for that. Just don't go there. Just don't go there. But they did it. No, don't go there. It's like you don't, you, you're way bigger than this. I had meant to do a visualization, which maybe I'll do in the next, in the next live stream. I'm not sure of, of, um, of moving beyond the snow globe that we're all trapped in, but there's no, we're way beyond time for that right now. But anyway, the point is that you want to be able to connect to the degree that you can connect to your deeper self and to the deeper dimension of reality. That is the degree to which your personal re personal reality, your personal universe will be created in a more safe and harmonious, redemptive way. So we have to, at, the more we care about the collective, the more we have to allow ourselves to separate from it, from the collective consciousness so that we can manifest that new consciousness, that redemption consciousness and be portals to it. Am I being clear? Yes. Yeah. When did I receive the spark of Mashiach Ben David, Carl? 
You said that's when I received it. When did I receive it? Um, okay, yeah. So as it gets turbulent, you're a lighthouse, you're a portal, you belong to a soul tribe, you belong to a community, you have set your intentions, you have made a connection to this potential and energy, you have prayed, you have declared your co-creative partnership with God. And now as you go into the year and you observe turbulence, you observe chaos, confusion, depression, despair, fear, which is going to happen to some people because it has to, right? Stay away. And you won't be able to stay away completely unless you're way more advanced than I am, which maybe you are. But know that the, the mission is to stay away, get help, do the work, use the tools, do the learning, be part of the communities, because it is not our job to be dragged into the volcano. It is our job to get into flight, that butterflies fly, right? Caterpillars can't move very fast. They kind of have to deal with whatever happens where they are. Butterflies, no, sayonara. Right. So I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm totally serious. It's, we don't know what's going to happen, but clearly the energy around the eclipse, not only what people are feeling, but whatever's going on under the surface. And I'm not just talking spiritually, although certainly spiritually, everything is moving together and it's likely the world's likely to be rocking and rolling a lot faster and a lot bigger. And it's imperative that we know who we are right now in this sacred space here, in this unified space, and that we remember who we are and what we're here for, and that we do the work to wire it into the body. And if we do that, and we will do that, we are doing that. The more the world shakes, the more we soar and shed light and throw the life preserver. And there's so many analogies we become homeopathic drops that if you know homeopathy one energetic vibration can change can transform a body and a mind miraculously and totally one may one or two or three people know what needs to be done and how it should be done let's do it okay i just want to hear carl's answer Carl, when did I receive the spark of Mashiach Ben David? I'm waiting for you. Holding everybody on the line here. Okay, hey, maybe he'll tell me privately. Facebook. All right. I I don't want to go. I never want to go, but um, blessings to everybody. Additional blessings, and may all the blessers, every blesser be blessed the blessings of the Holy One who adds abundantly over the original blessing. And we'll see what happens. Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Thank you for helping me make my vision real. Yes. So much love. Till next time. And may the Lord bless you and your book and the yes. success of your book and the impact.